beatboxing. Beats and rhymes. I hope you're not goofing off there, yeah? Just because there ain't no Riyadh cards for June or July. There's no goofing off, bro. There's no goofing off. 16th of June, Puerto Rico. Matthias will defend his IBF 140 pound title against the unbeaten Australian Liam Paro. I believe the boxing community and the betting odds will be in Matthias's favour and rightly so, but this is Matram debut, second defence of the title. We'll be hoping for a good fight. I know a lot of people are listening to this expecting Matthias to make Liam Paro another victim succumbing to Matthias's vicious game of accretion. The week after that, the 22nd of June, we head over to Birmingham where the improving Tyler Denny, 18-2-3, with only one stoppage, he's not a big puncher, but he is the European champion. Hasn't lost a fight for a minute and he's won a lot of fights in which he wasn't supposed to win. European champion, 32 years of age, he takes on Felix Cash. 16-0, 10 inside the distance, looks spectacular when he stopped Denzel Bentley in a few rounds in 2021, but he hasn't been in the ring since 2022. He's no longer with Tony Sims at the Matrim gym. He's 31 himself, you know, like, time flies, I'm telling you, time flies. And he didn't look good in his last two fights in 2022. A few years ago, you would have predicted a knockout win or a stoppage for Felix Cash. But this one is up for grabs, literally up for grabs. It's Matram versus Boxer. Cash repping Matram, Denny repping Boxer. Yes, they've actually made a fight together. Boxer went through with the purse bids. Matram won it. It'll be on the zone. I can't pick a winner right now. I can't. I'm just going to watch the fight, enjoy it, and see how it plays out. I'm not exaggerating about the Tyler Denny form. There's at least four or five unbeaten records he's took in his last seven or eight fights. At least. One of them, Brad Paul, who was unlucky not to wrest the British title from Nathan Heaney just the other month. This could be an upset. Tyler will be full of confidence. He'll be full of confidence. Felix, very powerful looking, imposing middleweight. This one might go to the wire. It might go to the wire, man. Boxing. Beats and rhymes. 29th of June. Phoenix, Arizona, Bam Rodriguez challenges Juan Estrada for the super flyweight title, WBC title. Sonny Edwards, he's on the undercard. He'll be trying to get back on the winning trail against Adrian Curiel, who himself is coming off a stoppage loss to Nant Shinga, who he previously knocked out in a round in an upset. That was for the IBF light flyweight title. Sonny obviously coming off that loss to Bam Rodriguez, first loss of his career. Bam looked very impressive in that fight. Is it his time to step into the limelight and beat one Francisco Estrada who's been very inactive? Very inactive. Could be Bam's time. On the 6th of July, week after that, Johnny Fisher, 11-0, 10 inside the distance from Rumford, Essex, takes on the 33-year-old Croatian, Alan Babic. 12-0, 11 inside the distance, one loss. Could this be Fisher's big test? Or would he just be too big for Alan the Savage Babich? Some people are sniffing around an upset here. Might be a couple of crafty bets on Babich. This all takes place East London. The Copper Bosch. The Copper Bosch. Johnny and his dad are on that Bosch bish and you know they're turning the Copper Box into the Copper Bosch now. You know what I mean? The Copper Bosch. And apparently, you know what I mean? They're going to bring a healthy crowd to the Copper Bosch. Babich came back with a stoppage win over Steve Robinson since losing his bridge weight attempt in Poland last year. And that's just me skimming through the schedule. None of this is pay-per-view. I understand, depending where you are, where you're located to in the world, these fights or these cards may not appeal to you. I do get that, but still good, good value for money. Consistent boxing and good boxing will match boxing on D-A-Z-N. Boxing. Beats and rhymes. Boxing. Beats and rhymes. April the 20th. Devin Haney attempted to defend his 140-pound WBC title against Ryan Garcia. Ryan flunked the weight by three pounds. Flawed Devin multiple times. Won a 12-round decision. Wasn't illegible to collect the title because he missed the weight. Then he tested positive for Nandrolone. That violation was dropped. But he also tested positive for Osterine. The final decision on what Ryan will be charged with shouldn't be too far away been a long-running story for a month and a half after their battle on april the 20th 
Devin still retains his belt according to WBC rules. The two have went back and forth. It's divided the boxing community. A lot of people are still backing Ryan despite the preponderance of evidence suggesting that he's a dirty athlete. The one thing they are in agreement with, Devin and Ryan, Ryan Garcia, he tweeted, still no payment from Golden Boy Promotion and the Zone. And Devin Haney said, same. Now, it could be just an administration error. Why are they not breaking the fighters off their ends? What they've earned. But right now, Devin and Ryan are like, fuck you, pay me. Devin said, Oscar's bitch ass ain't answered the phone for weeks, bitch. I'm phoning about my money. I want my goddamn money. I'm not going to speculate on what I think it is. I will assume, though, the zone, the network, are the first in the chain of command receiving the money. They hand it down to the promoters, and the promoters hand it to the fighters. Golden Boy, not very happy with Ryan. They said, as we have always done with all of our fighters, Golden Boy paid Ryan and Devin exactly what they are owed under their contracts. As with all pay-per-view events, revenue comes in overtime and additional payments will be made when more money is received. If they weren't aware of this fact, we would hope their managers are, or perhaps Ryan and Devin should pay more attention to their contracts than their social media feeds. <laughs> Ryan's also been in a back and forth with Teofimo Lopez who said that Ryan sold out getting involved in the Bohemian Grove Man's Club and that's how he got the Gatorade deal that Teo was propositioned but it ended up going to Ryan because he does some gear yeah. business in that Bohemian Men's Club Teo also said that Ryan's mother's breast cancer diagnosis is karma bad karma for him selling out to them Hollywood rituals Dante's boxing nation he embellished with what he thinks is the truth. That is bad karma, his mum getting cancer for cheating against Devin. Could have potentially put Devin in a box. Ryan apparently promises vengeance against Teofimo Lopez. He says when he sees him, it won't be no fight. He's going to get it back in blood. Basically saying he's going to kill Teofimo Lopez. And this is the problem with youth culture. Everything that crosses your mind, you feel you have to express it, and you don't. Yeah, your mum's going through breast cancer. My mum went through breast cancer and died. You gotta be stoic, you gotta deal with your shit, one problem at a time, a day at a time. And stop doing the bitch boy f***atry. I'm gonna kill people. Apparently, Ryan got arrested just the other day. There's so much happening with this guy. In such a short proximity, he got arrested in California in a hotel for felony vandalism in some Beverly Hills Waldorf Astoria hotel damaging property in his room and in the hallway he was taken away by the police shielded by a helmet shirtless again you know him and Adrian Broner people said yeah Broner snitched on himself no you snitched on your brethren more than anything like you want to snitch on yourself snitch on yourself you snitched on your brethren threatening to shoot people and stuff you know what I mean like these kids across that part of the world, they think they've had the toughest life, tougher than anyone else's. There's kids having tougher lives than you. Trust me on that. Around the world, a lot tougher. Then you've got the Ryan Garcia fan club putting him up as some martyr, some righteous martyr trying to take down the wicked. Listen to this. Ryan Garcia is in serious danger. He exposed what they do to children at Bohemian Grove. He exposed the elite pedophile ring in Hollywood. He revealed what is happening in Gaza. He called out specific pedophiles by name. Now they have him exactly where they want him in prison, where he has no way to defend himself, just like Jeffrey Epstein. You know, the fact that you think Ryan Garcia is exposing trending news stories that you would know about if you wasn't so fixated by your PS2 or your PS3 or OnlyFans or Red Pill shows how dumbed down this generation is right pedophilia in hollywood that's a new story what's happening in gaza is a new story they've been talking about this before you were born what's the matter with these kids and the same one claiming ryan garcia martyr status like a little while back ryan said something bad's gonna happen to him on june the 8th and this clown is talking like it's some major revelation he said something's bad is gonna happen to him on june the 8th and he smashes up the hotel room. <laughs> I can't believe how dumb 
dumb these kids are. Oh, gosh. So what? He's Nostradamus. He smashed up the hotel himself. Something bad didn't happen to him. He made it happen. These are the ones who say he's innocent. So you take a hair follicle test that proves you didn't take Osterine. You had no Osterine in you. But then he said the Nutribio product was contaminated with Osterine and that's why traces were found. And if you explain one statement contradicts the other, they still don't get it. Yep, I'm a high school dropout. Prove it. Two plus two equals three. What do you do, Boxing. Beats and rhymes. What's up with Fabio Wardley? A lot of murmurings. Nothing confirmed as far as I know that he's going to sign with Queensbury. Surprised me a little because he built his name as a free agent on Matrum. He's managed to navigate around the British domestic scene without signing to Matrum. He's worked with Boxer. He's worked with Queensbury. And I said it in my last upload that Dillian White managed fighters have done very well as free agents. They know what they're doing. So it would shock me if Fabio gave up his independence and tied himself down to Queensbury. But I guess signing to Frank Warren is a little different now as Frank has a working relationship with Eddie Hearn. If there's a fight that needs to be made between Matchroom and Queensbury, there are no obstacles at the moment. So financially, it might not be a bad idea for Fabio to get a nice little signing fee for whatever period or for how many fights and just get on with it. But nothing's confirmed yet. Nothing's confirmed. Boxing. Beats and rhymes. Boxing. Beats and rhymes. Bruce Shushu Carrington from Shu York. Brooklyn's in the house. Yeah, I tell you what, man. Promoter's dream. Promoter's dream. Cocky. Big featherweight, 5'8", 72 inch reach, hand speed. The body work was very impressive. Better than what I saw last time I see him perform. The body work was really good. The right hook is vicious, it's mean. He looks for knockouts. Throws a little Philly shell in there. What's not to like? He reckons that Inoue flew in from Japan to see him fight. And he probably did. This kid is good. Is that a fight that Inoue is eyeing up? A jump up in weight? Well, Shushu ain't got no belts. I've heard Nick Ball and Inoue as a potential fight. Shushu is now 12-0 and with 8 inside the distance. He took out the very capable Brian De Garcia. And if you haven't heard, you should go find out about this kid. He's pretty good. Shortly after Jack Cattrall outpointed Josh Taylor, he went on Twitter and asked who everybody wanted to see him fight next. A lot of people... You know, they went for Matias, they went for Lopez, they went for the champions. Well, Lopez is fighting Claggett. Matias, he's got the Australian kid, Paro. And I was the only one who went for Arnold Barboza. And I went through the whole conversation, I was the only one. And recently, a back and forth started between Jack Cattrall and Arnold Barboza. Barboza said, send the contract. They sent it. He claims they haven't sent it. Eddie said, we've sent the offer. And Cattrall wants to fight. But the problem is, if Catterall is ranked number six and Barboza is ranked number one, then he's not that far off from a shot at Teofimo Lopez. And after the egg he laid against Sean McComb on the Haney Garcia undercard and was gifted, one of the worst decisions I've actually ever seen. I'm not exaggerating. Definitely one of the worst, you know. He's a little bit of a liability. Catterall is alleging he's asking three times the amount for what he got paid against Macomb. And obviously, if he's got to travel to the UK on a matrim card and risk his number one ranking, they have to make it worth his while. So that fight is not going to happen. After watching him get boxed like that, the last thing they're going to do is put him in with another boxer. Unless they come up with the requested purse, which they're not going to do. They're not going to pay him over the odds. It's not a box office fight in the UK or anything like that. Yeah, but that's the fight I requested. You know, like Barboza, 30 you know, 11 inside the distance, good statistical record, number one contender. Unless he had an off day against Macomb, he looks very beatable. This is the fight. You know, it's a Jack Carroll, he's 30 years of age now. And like, he got the UD over Josh Taylor, you know. But here's the thing, like, after the controversial first fight and then Teofimo Lopez washing Jack and taking the title, you know, that will win... 
does what for Jack Catterall now? He's still calling out contenders to fight. It hasn't exactly put him in a position where all the contenders want to fight Jack Catterall because he's a big attraction. So if Jack has learned anything, if this guy don't want to fight, it's time to stop going back and forth with him. Move on. Move on and find out who does want the fight. Jack waited too long for the Josh Taylor fight in his feelings because he didn't get the first verdict. By the time we get round to the rematch, Teofimos took the last bit of shine and the last belt from Josh Taylor. You wait two years and have to ask, was it really worth it? Golden Boy don't have that much prized assets. They're going to cash Barboza out when the time is right. It makes no sense in fighting Jack Catterall. But let me tell you one person he should fight. And that's the Irish kid, Sean McComb. You know, the fact that no one is lobbying for Sean McComb to get a rematch, that Golden Boy are not willing to run it back, or Barboza is playing mute. And with that... I'm gone, ghost, peace, sayonara.